my very great pleasure this morning to introduce Barbara Buza, who is the president of Walt Disney Imagineering, and Jeff Shaver Moskowitz, which I could never get out from. Jeff Shaver Moskowitz, who is an executive producer with Walt Disney Imagineering. So welcome to both of you. And it's just, uh, again, a warm welcome this morning. Um, you were probably the luckiest group ever because this is such an amazing uh, adventure that you're on. I believe this is, what, day three? And so, again, just want to give you a welcome. I'm just so grateful to, to be able to uh, spend some time and be invited up here to uh, join you all. So as Becky mentioned, I'm Barbara Boza, president of Walt Disney Imagineering. And uh, again, I talk about our Imagineers as the uh, innovators and creators all across the globe. We've got eight locations around the world. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a licensed architect, that's my background. And uh, I joined Imagineering right in the middle of the pandemic. So uh, wow. you can imagine. <laughs> So June of 2020, so if you can imagine, uh, just before I joined every park, every resort, the cruise ships, uh, movies, sports, you just name it, weren't even operating, right? We had just reopened our Hong Kong and Shanghai parks. And then if you just see the tremendous work that's been delivered over the last few years, given what we were with the pandemic, it, is, it has been tremendous. So again, I'm incredibly proud of our Imagineers. Um, I remember we all were kind of working home during the, uh, during the pandemic, and I remember sitting at my desk. My daughter was at home, again, a very big fan of Disney, doing her, her school, and my husband's also an architect. And she would see me, um, you know, watching uh, Frozen on my computer, and she says, are you actually watching Frozen? You know, I'm not even, uh, you know, we're, we're doing a, a number of attractions. She said, so is that work? So, you know, so just remind me. So, you know, so what do Imagineers do? You know, as an architect, so what do you actually do? You know, what I like to say is we immerse our guests in experiences that create memories of a lifetime. And again, I know this experience that you're all embarking on is gonna be a, really a memory of a lifetime. So I know that's a tall order for a whole, but I do believe as Imagineers, that's what we create. So we've got over 100 different disciplines. I know many of you know Imagineering very well. I know some of you probably have like, what are Imagineers? And again, going back to before Disneyland was built, um, it was Walt Disney who said, you know, I need to create this experience where we can bring these stories to life. And so you're sitting right here in Disneyland, which was that original park. And if you look back, I mean, boy, how things have changed. Disneyland Park was built in one year for $17 million. So let's think about what you can get for 17 million today. So again, we just, as Imagineers, we just celebrated our 70th anniversary last year. Very excited, and as you know, this is the 100th anniversary of Walt, Dis of Walt Disney. But uh, just going back to Imagineers, so again, really blending that idea about art and science and with over 100 disciplines. So we've got everything from artists to architects to robotics, uh, we've got an Imagineer who has over a hundred uh, patents, just to give you an example. Rockwork engineers, mechanical engineers, construction managers, um, musicians, uh, producers, a whole gamut. Um, and on top of that, we even have the Muppet Studio. So if you're Muppet fans, those also fall within Imagineer, so we're pretty excited. So over really just these past few years, uh, there's a number of experiences right here at the Disneyland Resort that have been completed such as Pixar Pier, Avengers Campus, I hope you get to see that. That's just gonna, that's such a great example again. You get to be your own superhero, you really see that combination of a live entertainment performer with uh, our Suntronics Robotics. And when I go out there, I swear, people still say that robot is, is, is a live performer. So you get to really see where the two tend to complement each other, very exciting. And then also we've got, uh, we completed just before the pandemic, Galaxy's Edge, and then also just recently, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Toontown. Just uh, really excited. We've got a number of projects right now um, getting close to opening um, here at the resort. We've got the uh, new DVC here, uh, right here at Disneyland. We've got a Pixar Place Hotel, so very excited. More options for where to stay on the range. Um, and then again, we're at Tiana's Bayou Adventure, just gonna be absolutely stunning, and so many, many more. And so, very fortunate to get around the world, because again, 
what we as Imagineers, we felt so important as a global to make sure we're really reaching into the local culture, the local languages, as we look at um, the experiences we create and the music we create, how do we make sure we really take advantage of that? So I'm gonna, you know, I've got my partner Jeff up here who uh, really knows this part, like the back of his hand, serving as our uh, executive producer across the resort. So, uh, you know, I wanna give you a chance to say a few words. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It is uh, so good to have you here. It's so good to have you here at Disneyland. We are uh, excited to have you here. Uh, it's really cool for me because uh, halfway through my Disney career, I worked with Adventures by Disney as a trip operations associate. So half of those people in the back, uh, we worked together back in the day before I came to Imagineering. So this is uh, kind of full circle for me. It's a, a super special product, Adventures by Disney. I've always just been in awe of the amazing experiences that we get to deliver in a very Disney way. Uh, and you guys are on the most ultimate of that. So uh, it's, it's really cool to be here. Uh, I'll, I'll just introduce myself a little bit, tell you how I got here. Um, I was uh, born in Florida, I grew up at Walt Disney World, grew up a very Disney kid, I, I loved the parks, that was my, my happy place, my escape. Uh, and wanted to be an Imagineer when I grew up, but uh, I thought it had to do with uh, art or engineering, and I can't draw a stick figure and I suck at that. So I was like, well that's not gonna happen. But you still became an Imagineer. And somehow I found my way there. Uh, I started my career with Walt Disney World when I was 17, and cast member at the Disney MGM Studios, then danced in the parades and shows for six and a half years. Uh, left Disney in 2001, moved out to LA to start a career in television, had an amazing 10 year career in television. Uh, on my hiatuses was when I worked with uh, Adventures by Disney during the summer, uh, when I had some time off in between my shows with uh, Dick Clark Productions uh, and the Golden Globes. And that's when I met Michael and Dean and Leslie and Kay and the whole team. Uh, we spent the summers together running these trips. And then in 2011, I got an opportunity to come to Imagineering as a, a project coordinator on Shanghai Disneyland, which I know you guys will be seeing soon. That part is near and dear to my heart. I was the project coordinator for the Enchanted Storybook Castle, Gardens of Imagination, Mickey Avenue, Disney Town, the two hotels, basically everything from the castle forward. I, I got to work on, work with our Disney legend, Doris Hardoon, who was our uh, 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 creative director and producer on that. Uh, just an amazing learning experience and introduction to Imagineering for me. I found my way there because, uh, you know, uh, with all the other uh, you know, entities that, that Barbara mentioned, uh, they also needed producers, and my background was bringing these creative teams through a project uh, process uh, and to the other side of the finish line. So uh, well, after doing uh, the Shanghai Disneyland work, I got asked to move into creative as assistant producer on Disneyland. Uh, this was in 2013, and so I got to spend a couple years here, worked on the 60th anniversary of Disneyland and the new magic that we did there, so I produced the Hatbox Ghost for the Haunted Mansion, uh, one of my favorite projects. Haunted Mansion fan, I love that. Uh, yeah, Hatbox was, was a super special moment to get to bring one of Yoel Gracie's original ideas, something that was missing from the mansion since 1969 to life. Uh, with this very, very small team, there was only about 10 of us, uh, and some just amazing technical wizardry uh, went into that. We got to put some new magic into the Matterhorn. Hopefully you guys are gonna experience that today. Um, if you, uh, when you go up the lift hill, there's a, some media of the abominable snowman climbing up. That's actually kind of rotoscoped off of me wearing a really cheap Amazon purchased uh, <laughs> abominable snowman costume going grrrr. So I'll say hi to you when you're in the Matterhorn today. Uh, and uh, I got to produce Louise Rock and Roasters over at Cars Land, if you can experience that. Uh, left uh, Disneyland portfolio for a couple of years to help reimagine Epcot, so all the experiences at Epcot that are opening up now. Uh, started with myself and Tom Fitzgerald and just a few Imagineers kind of reimagining what does the future of Epcot look like? So Galaxies, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, Space 2 Tony Restaurant, uh, that whole new entrance, I got to be part of that. And then was asked uh, about six and a half years ago to come back to the Disneyland portfolio and get to be the executive portfolio producer here. So I oversee the creative teams through the creative development and early process. I produced uh, Pixar Pier. Hopefully you get to stop by there and, and have a ride on the Incredicoaster. Uh, and then uh, spent also the last, uh, almost the entire time I've been here, I pitched the idea of bringing Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway here back in 2017, when we saw what uh, Kevin Rafferty and Sharita Carter were working on for Disney and Hollywood Studios. I said, that, that feels like a uniquely Disneyland attraction. We've got to bring that here uh, to, to uh, Mickey's home and Mickey's Toontown. 
So we've been working on that for quite a while. With that, we also got to reimagine Toontown. Uh, so those are some great experiences that just opened. You guys are gonna get to experience today. Mickey Means Runway Railway, if you've had a chance to experience it in Florida, the attraction is very much the same, but we've got a whole new story here uh, because in Florida, you know, you're walking from the human world of Disney and Hollywood Studios and the Brown and Chinese Theater, and you get sucked into this cartoon world. We kind of had the, the problem to figure out, you know, okay, well, you're already in the cartoon world of Mickey's Toontown. How do you step from a cartoon world into a different cartoon world? So we created the El Capitoon Theater, and uh, we had a very immersive queue experience uh, where Minnie has teamed up with the Toontown Hysterical Society to uh, bring all these props from Mickey's career out. Uh, it's called Mickey Through the Years. And so you get to see a lot of amazing props from Mickey's career throughout that, uh, through that queue. Uh, really exciting opportunity there. And then, you know, getting to do that also gets a chance to reimagine one of our lands, you know, a place like Disneyland who's heading towards its 70th anniversary in a couple of years. Um, we do a lot of, of taking a look at our existing and classic uh, entities and bringing new magic to them, making them feel fresh and new. And Toontown was one of those things that you know was a, a favorite of guests who grew up with that for the past 30 years. But we knew we had the opportunity here to bring some new magic to Toontown and get it ready for the guests of the next generation. And so we spent a lot of time um, not only designing new opportunities and, and fun play experiences in Toontown, but also designing it for guests with different abilities, to make sure that every child who comes to that land knows that it's designed for them. Um, so we took all the curbs out, it is entirely you know, wheelchair accessible. We uh, designed things like the fountain to be at the height of a child's wheelchair so that they can roll up and play in the water in the fountain and, uh, and engage with all the experiences. We have a lot of sensory experiences uh, for any of our guests on the spectrum who need a, a quiet zone or a more um, touch sensory experience. Uh, we engineered the the sound for the, the land uh, to be in a key that is not um, off-putting to somebody who has a, a sound uh, sensory um, sensitivity. So a lot of love being put into that land by that team. As Barbara said, we worked all through the pandemic designing that thing over Zoom. And uh, it was really, really cool when we actually broke ground, uh, which was about a, you know, a year and a half ago now. Uh, it was the first time that we had the entire team together in one place uh, physically. Uh, it was a really, really cool experience. So I hope you guys enjoy uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway, tune down all of our new experiences here, and uh, you know, the 70th anniversary coming up, and uh, everything else, we've got a ton of new magic that we're bringing up for Disneyland as well. So can't wait to have you come back for that. Yeah, so I also uh, wanna have Kim come up here and join us. When I, uh, one of my first memories when, I'm, you know, as you all know, the Disneyland Park was closed for uh, more than a year. I think it was 412 days exactly, and we, I don't know how many minutes and seconds we were, uh, but I remember spending some time with Kim walking down Main Street, and you know, you do get a very different perspective of a space, of a park, when it's like that, and that was, it gave us an opportunity as Imagineers to, wait a minute, let's take a step back. What are some of those areas and those experiences that we can begin to look at and create and take advantage of, so we, have less disruption when the guests are going to be back in the park. And so I want to uh, turn over to Kim and uh, maybe you can tell a few stories. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. I am so excited to be able to talk with you. What a trip you guys have planned. It, it, it just sounds amazing. And I'm so glad that you get to start it off here at Disneyland. This is the first park, and to me, this is our best park because it was Walt's Park. And I've spent most of my 50-year career with Imagineering here at Disneyland Park, looking out for the care and feeding of this park and working with our operation partners and our maintenance partners and making sure that we always add new things as well as maintain the old things. Um, you know, Walt had a famous quote that Disneyland would never be complete as long as there is imagination left in the world. And us Imagineers take that quote very seriously and think about it often with the changing of, of time and, and what's, what's relative to people and how we can keep this park renewed, but always within the original intent because our respect for the original Imagineers and Walt and his original design is always top of mind. Um, as John Hench, my mentor and, and Walt's right hand man used to come down to the park at least once a month after we located down here and walked the park with us. And one of the things he would always remind me is 
Disneyland, the whole reason Disneyland was, you know, so important to Walt is because he realized that once he made a motion picture or a cartoon or an animated film, once it was in the can, he couldn't do anything with it. It was done. If he thought of something later he'd like to do with it or if he wanted to change something he didn't think was, was a good part of the movie, he couldn't do it. So he created Disneyland as a place that he could always add to, he could always change things. If something wasn't working out, he could take it out and put something better. And if a new technology came up with a new, a new idea or something he could do, he could do it here. And that was the whole purpose of not keeping it like a museum, but always trying to bring new things into the park and to the guests, but always within the original intent and the storylines. So today, I, I hope that you'll get an opportunity to see a couple of things. Um, I know that Jeff talked about the, um, I think the 100th Gallery on Main Street. I think y'all had breakfast there yesterday or dinner. But um, that's our show that celebrates um, something new that we've never done before, but all of the attractions that were designed after motion pictures and cartoons that were made. And now today, a lot of movies that are made out of the attractions that we have at Disneyland today. So it allows us to show a lot of the wonderful artwork that was done for both the um, feature films, the animated uh, and the uh, live action films, and also our attractions. Um, it was very special to me to be able to curate that that gallery because my father was an animator for the studio for many years, which a lot of people may not know. And when I was a very little girl, he gifted me with a little set of drawings that he did from Dumbo. And I've kept them all these years, and I was able to frame them and put them up in the little animation room that we created there at the gallery show. Um, you may have noticed going by Treehouse, we've got that completely scaffolded and getting prepared to finish up our, our new treehouse. Um, you probably know that, uh, that Walt, when he wanted to film the Swiss Family Robinson movie off the book, he found a little island of Tobago in the Caribbean, and on it was this big banyan tree. So he brought over all of his set builders from the studio, and they built that wonderful, all those little rooms in that white banyan tree. Uh, he was so enamored with it that when he was finished, he said, I'm going to build this tree at Disneyland. I need to do this tree house at Disneyland. It's just too, too wonderful. And I've got this little place right on the Jungle River where I can put it. The problem was there was no big banyan tree there to put those rooms in. So we built one, a 70 foot tall, what's called by Bill Evans, the Disney Adendrum Eximus, which means very unusual Disney tree. Um, and create and recreate these wonderful rooms throughout. Um, it sat with a big water wheel in front, taking those buckets of water up into the tree. And for, for many, many years, a, a, a player worked in playing the Swiss Capoca and entertained many people. But during the 90s, um, traffic was dropping off a little bit going up in that tree, and the movie Tarzan came out, and they decided to that they would put the Tarzan on a pee in the tree. So it went through quite a uh, rehabilitation at that time, the installation of Tarzan. Moving forward, here we are. We're getting ready to ce celebrate our seventh year of Disney, and we decided to bring back the old tree house, uh, Swiss Family Robinson. It's now the Adventureland tree house, uh, inspired by Walt Disney's Swiss Family Robinson. It has a wonderful new family in it, a mother who is a fabulous musician, Yes, the organ will come back, my this was the uh, A daughter, a teenage daughter, who's an astronomer and an astrologer, and studies the moon and the stars out the windows of her treehouse and locked in the tree and creates graphs and models of the universe and all kinds of wonderful magic that only our wizards can create. The two twin boys are naturalists. One loves animals, one loves plants, so their room is full of monkeys and toucans and birds and all kinds of fun orchids and man-eating plants. And then father is the chef, so his kitchen, he's created this amazing place where all of the food can cook itself on the stove. He's made a nice box in the room, jungle, and all kinds of fun things that they've created. And it's all run by the magic of the wonderful water wheel, which we're bringing back, that takes that magical water out of the creek up into the tree. 
So make sure you get a chance to see that. And as Jeff mentioned, Haunted Mansion is my favorite attraction, and I think you all know why. Because being the daughter of the famous Madame Liara and being able to uh, fill in for her for the night before Christmas makes it special. But it's also special to me because I just think it's the best attraction that we have ever designed. It is so amazing and was so full of ideas that when we look back in our um, archives of the, the ideas of Rolly Crumb, and Mark Davis and Todd Coates and that amazing dream team that we all put together. We find all of these things that we can still add to mansion. It's just this wealth of opportunities. And it just said, technology finally caught up with the brilliance of Yale Gracie installing the, the uh, cat box goes home. So we're always looking for new things for Haunted Mansion. So I hope you will or rich to some of those as well. Have a wonderful, wonderful day here at Walt's Disneyland. And I know we have an amazing trip. Thank you. All the sites around the world. So really so grateful that you're going to spend this time with um, our teams. And I know as Imagineers, uh, we're so grateful that you're going to be able to experience all the attractions. I, you know, and again, as you said, uh, you know, this Disneyland never, you know, is completed, right? And so, you know, Disneyland Ford, as you've heard about, is something, again, future expansion. So opportunities for more stories, more ideas, and again, and the need for more Imagineers. So I see a lot of really smart people in this group here, and so we're always looking for smart minds and creative minds, and I tell you, with over 100 disciplines, um, just always want you to all feel inspired and really appreciate your thoughts and your thinking. So again, thank you for uh, letting us take the time to share what we love and what we do, um, and again, enjoy the rest of your trip. I know it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.